In this example, we're going to determine the domain of this function f of x. So if you'd like to go ahead and try this first, pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work it together. Okay, so looking at this, it seems like we have a square root expression here, which is going to hamper our domain. So instead of being all real numbers, we'll have some limited domain. And also the square root is in the denominator. So a couple of things to consider. So first of all, it's the square root, so it's an even index, so we just can't have this radicand, which is that x cubed minus x expression. It cannot be negative, so it has to be uh, non-negative. But in fact, since it's in the denominator, it also cannot be zero, because if it is zero, the square root of zero is zero, and then we have ourselves division by zero, so that's no good. So instead of x cubed minus x being greater than or equal to zero, uh, it's just going to be greater than zero. Again, we cannot have this equal to as well. Okay, so how do we solve this inequality? Well, I'm going to start by factoring this left side and setting it equal to zero because I need to find some critical numbers that I can work with. So let's go ahead and start by factoring. Uh, I can factor using the greatest common factor of just x, and I'll have x squared minus 1. And then I can factor down this x squared minus 1 using a difference of squares. And finally, I can use the zero property of multiplication just to go ahead and take all three of these factors and set them equal to zero and solve. So we'll see we have three values, x equals zero, positive one, and negative one. So what I'm going to do here is draw a nice number line, and I'm going to plot those three values. So we had negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And these are the values that when I plug them into the function, they're going to give me 0 in the denominator. Okay, and remember, that's a problem. But no other values will give me a problem. So that means if these are the three problem values, then I can search to see in these regions uh, is it going to be negative? Is it going to be positive? And I can kind of go from there. So I need test points. So it seems like maybe x equals negative 2. x equals, well, something between 0 and negative 1 will be maybe negative 1 half. And then positive 1 half. And then positive 2. Okay, so we have four test values, one for each region. So let's go ahead and plug it back into our inequality right here. So we'll start with the x equals negative 2. So we want to make sure that it's positive. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8 minus a negative 2. Well, that's going to be negative, so that's no good. So how about x equals negative 1 half? Well, that'll be negative 1 eighth minus a negative 1 half. So that'll be positive, okay? So that'll be okay. Let's try positive 1 half. Well, that'll be 1 eighth minus a half, and that'll be negative, so that's no good. And finally, x equals 2, and so 2 cubed is 8 minus 2, that'll be positive, so that's good. So we have a couple of regions that are going to be acceptable regions, and then a couple of regions that were not acceptable regions. So what we can do here is go ahead and write this domain in interval notation. So we're going to have two intervals, from negative 1 to 0, but recall that the negative 1 and the 0, these endpoints, are not in and of themselves acceptable points because they result in division by 0. So we'll have to use parentheses. So negative 1 to 0 in parentheses, union 1 to positive infinity. So here will be our domain, and we have written this in interval notation. So this is the domain for this function, and let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this function. And based on a visual inspection of the graph, you can see that uh, the domain is indeed what we saw algebraically here.